G'day there. Uh, welcome to the closing bell. Uh, recording this on the 19th, um, around midday on the Friday. And um, stocks perking up a bit. The um, uh, NASDAQ for sure, um, powering ahead. And uh, Netflix up 10% on the Thursday night. And we're sort of breaking out to new highs in the move. Um, so it's an interesting uh, sort of development. So I'll just uh, have a little chat about um, the S&P, maybe have a look at the NASDAQ, um, just to get a sense that, uh, you know, we may be in for a, a bit of a run. I'll just show you the um, key levels to keep an eye on. So this is the um, S&P 500, or the futures on the S&P 500. We've watched this thing pretty closely. I've been very wary that um, we're on the edge of tipping over again. Uh, but boy, it's been a dead old market and uh, has been going nowhere for quite a while. So I just want to update you on where we're at. Um, we know we've got the huge rally, the correction we've had into last year, and prices then rallying back to the midpoint of the whole correction. And I've just been stuck at that midpoint. So it's really a point of uh, indecision for the market when it's right at the middle of the range. Pretty much everyone's annoyed, uh, the bulls and the bears. Um, so just giving you that feel for where we're at, uh, you can see that that midpoint of the range has been real resistance for quite a while and uh, price action selling off into the buy zone of the range um, of that whole correction, you can see there. So we've had a couple of attempts um, to sell off, hitting that buy zone, finding the buying pressure. So you can see the weekly momentum had turned up quite a while ago and the monthly momentum is still down. So this is where it's been quite tricky, um, sort of wondering where is that monthly selling pressure. And because we've had this uh, last wave, sort of the most uh, recent wave to the downside, and I'll just trace that out. Uh, you should probably do know it, but we've got the just shorter term wave structure, really this weekly wave structure going on. And the most recent wave is the one I'm looking at. And prices were, you know, bumping up against the sell zone of that. So we've had um, lots of resistance. And again, we we're finding resistance in that area. So it was really at risk if the selling pressure took it through and we got the weekly sell pivot. I was saying, you know, there was a lot of dominoes below the market if we cracked through there that uh, could have things looking pretty bad pretty quickly. But this weekly momentum is continuing to hold firm, which is quite interesting. So in this last move, you can see we've got the uh, weekly buy pivot, which is that candle there. So that's when it had a weekly close above the high of the lowest price candle in the move. And since then, it's managed to continue marching higher. So we've got a, a first key bar in the move, which is there when we got a weekly close above the high of the weekly buy pivot candle. That's just watching the marching of the move higher. And you can see we're probably going to get another key bar in the move higher this week after lots of work done. So it's also breaking out above those highs as well. So really, you're setting yourself up with this weekly momentum to have a go at the most important sort of level, which is that recent high. Um, of the most recent down wave, which is very important because that does give you that sense that, look, maybe this thing is turning around. Um, there's still more resistance uh, above, but you're sort of setting up a domino here. Uh, if it can actually bust out above that high, there probably will be stoppies going off. And you'd think, uh, there's also, there's lots of uh, short positions in the S&P. It's quite a high level of short positions uh, outstanding at the moment. Um, 
so people are quite hedged. Not not many people really exposed to the market. Lots of people are nervous. So that sort of underinvestment and a large short position that could sort of kick the market into gear quite quickly, uh, where we could see a bit of a spike, um, which is you know n not my um, major case that I thought was going to happen. But this is what markets are like, and you're just sort of prepared for all outcomes. Um, so until we see, uh, you know, a weekly sell pivot here, um, so it need to fail. We've got a new high in the move now. So we need a weekly close below that low to be getting concerned, really. Um, you, you're just sort of allowing this now uh, to take shape. Is it going to carry on? Um, and But the major level really is this. It's not until it really pokes its head above that level. That's um, I'll give you the exact level there is um, 43.27. So that's where I've been saying sort of 43.50. Um, you know, above 43.50, well, uh, watch out. It could actually just spike up into that sell zone. So you're looking at, you know, a few hundred point rally. Um, but, you know, be wary that, uh, you know, that could be the real dummy um, bull trap. And then we could be heading off down again if um, you know growth really does get hammered um, so there's still more hurdles to overcome but the monthly um, if we just switch to the monthly for you you can see on this monthly on the S&P it is trying to poke its nose above this 20 month moving average isn't it it's been real resistance all the way since you know mid last year early last year so the market really has been struggling you know if we look just across those highs, uh, that month candle there was, um, what's that, June last year. So if I'm just looking at that candle for June last year, you know, look at how much price action we've had just within that range. Uh, it's really been quite deadly. Um, so it, it's trying to bust out above it and, you um, who knows if it could that with the tech looking the way it is people thinking you know rates may be near the high now um and if their earnings are resilient um you know maybe we are going to finally bust out above the 20 month and that level and look at that 10 month you know slowly trying to get closer uh, to that point where the monthly trend shifts if that happens um i have to sort of be changing my tune a bit so it's still tricky and nothing saying, look, just go for it. Um, it's definitely um, bull market conditions again, but just trying to break out of this range we've been in for just months and uh, just respecting the fact, you know, you've got a major um, bull market underneath, haven't you? And we've seen lots of buying from that one to two standard deviation below. Um, you know, the Bollinger Bands, uh, that's been the spot in this whole trend since 2009, where you've been wanting uh, to be a buyer. And you can see, again, it's been providing pretty good support. We got the monthly buyer pivot a while ago. So that short-term momentum is definitely up. That's where we've got that weekly buying um, is happening. Uh, so look, you know, there's a case to be made that, that that's it. And uh, if we get the monthly trend shift, uh, you know, it could be off to the races again. Uh, if you're looking at it in that really long-term uh, view. So, oh, that'd be great. I'd, I'd love that. I'm, I'm sick to death of uh, the last couple of years. I've got to tell you, it's been a, a tough old slog for everyone, hasn't it? Um, so look, pray that that is um, what we're going to see. That would be great. Um, but I, I fear that uh, there is a bit more um, selling pressure to come as growth falters and uh, there could be more trouble ahead with rates still quite high and the commercial real estate problems, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll still be pretty wary. But, you know, for now, I'm going to allow that uh, weekly momentum to the upside to continue. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see whether it can break out above 43.50 and have a bit of a um, short-term spike in prices. All right, well, um, that's enough for this week. I'll um, come back with more next week. Cheers.